My topic this afternoon is the, opera the maze operation, when and how. Um, I will show you that this operation is uh, grossly underused, and I'll try and discuss why. Where did it come from? Uh, should we be using it, and how? Now, in this, in the next few minutes, I will discuss pathophysiology. You've heard a lot about this, but in relation to the maze operation, be more specific. Uh, again, apropos the operative treatment of atrial fibrillation, I'll talk about the problems in AF and how can we deal with that. Uh, have a, a historical perspective in uh, talk about evolution of the concepts, the surgical technique, the maze three, and refinements later on. We're going to talk about who for in indications and what to expect results and why bother uh, talking about outcome and uh, then uh, try and look into the future, if I can. Now, now the pathophysiology, uh, it all started early on uh, by uh, the fundamental work of several people. One person stands out, Sir Thomas Lewis, FRS. Now, who is uh, Thomas Lewis? Um, he was the son of a mining engineer from Wales. He brought the string galvanometer of Eindhoven to the clinical bedside, started ECG, created the first department of clinical research at University College London, and Importantly, it was the first to describe circus movements and electrical circus circuits in the human atrium in atrial fibrillation. Really great uh, insight and at a very early stage. That was in 1908. So I think that's really uh, important. Now, my next slide shows really if we are going to treat atrial fibrillation surgically, we should uh, know what we are trying to do. Uh, you have had uh, excellent talks in this meeting about rate control, uh, the importance of uh, uh, restoring contractile function, but irregularity in itself actually does interfere with left ventricular filling and cardiac output. Uh, the less loss of contractile function also is important. We have heard a lot about embolism and strokes, which is obviously due to stasis. The question is, can you deal with all these uh, surgically and historically it started first uh, almost at the same time but maybe this was earlier uh, by Gerardon uh, described the corridor operation where he surgically created literally a corridor directing the electrical impul impulse from the SA node to the AV node and to the exclusion of the rest of the atrium. Uh, that was very clever and insightful, but uh, it isolated the rest of the atrium, which continued to fibrillate, and therefore you had problems with stasis as well as loss of contractile function. So that didn't catch on. Then the contributions of Jim Cox, uh, which many of you would know, 
uh, I see uh, Les Miller smiling because he worked at, in St. Louis in the same institution with Jim Cox. I think uh, Jim has made uh, really <coughs> fundamental <coughs> discoveries and um, he did electrical studies with some of his colleagues at Duke before he came to St. Louis and uh, the concept of macro and micro circus, circuits uh, in atrial fibrillation and how to interrupt them and also the bulk atrial circuits. I don't know what he meant by the bulk atri atrial circuits but in any case he wanted to interrupt the circuits, the circus circuits which we have seen from Sabine and other of uh, the presenters earlier and therefore uh, he created or thought of the maze operation and you can see the series of incisions in both the right and the left atrium creating literally a maze. Uh, what does that ensure? It ensures a single electrical I didn't know how to use the, the pointer. Jen, help. Uh, the button there. So you can see that that is only one pathway where the impulse can go uh, from the right atrium across to the left and back again to, the get, to get to the AV node. But the important thing is that the other incisions created blind alleys where the impulse went in but couldn't go anywhere to create a circus movement. So that interrupted the circus. But uh, the importance of that is that the electrical impulse actually activated contraction of these parts, at least in theory. And actually it happened in practice. So that's what uh, Jim Cox's original ideas all started. So he tried to deliver electrical impulse to all parts of the atrium, you can see, but they can't, they, they find blind ends. But uh, it's so quick that they contract uh, simultaneously. At least that was the idea. Uh, now this is just an overview of the incisions uh, of the maze operation. Both the right and left atrial appendages are divided. There are a series of incisions in the right atrium and I will show you more details about that in a minute. Uh, and there is a circular incision surrounding and isolating the pulmonary veins and then there is an incision from the circular incision down to the mitral annulus interrupting the pathway going across. So if we go through this and these pictures are taken from Jim Cox's original paper in the Journal of Thoracic Surgery, Mark. And uh, it starts uh, in the right atrium. What he does, the May 3, that is, uh, you have an incision from the inferior vena cava to the superior vena cava. The right atrial appendage is amputated and uh, an incision is made into the lateral wall of the right atrium and then uh, you look inside the atrium and you have another incision from that incision here extending towards the mitra, uh, the tricuspid, forgive me, the tricuspid annulus, here is the tricuspid and when you reach the tricuspid annulus uh, you um, use a cryoprobe, which is really simple, 
and make sure that there are no fibers uh, going across and therefore you interrupt the impulse at that level. Uh, you do a similar incision higher up uh, from the upper incision again to the tricuspid annulus. <coughs> then uh, an incision is made in the uh, um, interatrial septum going into the fossa ovalis but not going beyond that's important after that a series of incision in the left atrium are made I talked about the circular incision isolating the pulmonary veins and um, importantly I think uh, one if you make the incision right round, uh, right round uh, it becomes difficult uh, to orient things and uh, what uh, Jim Cox uh, suggested and I think I do that too is to leave a small bridge here which is then you, you, you we use a cryoprobe and that facilitates uh, having the incision the medial part uh, just above the mitral valve and the superior that is joined to the incision then an incision from the circular part like I showed before towards the mitral valve and then a cryoprobe lesion on the mitral annulus very simple really but I think quite effective in producing uh, the series of incision and the maze which ensures uh, what is needed both in terms of directing the impulse to the AV node and ensuring contraction of the left ventricle. A lot of scars and I know that um, Sabine would say that there is a lot of fibrosis later, but I think the atrium does contract after. Now, there has been uh, several re refinements uh, in, for this operation. Um, one of them, for example, whoops, is uh, actually published in the Journal of Global Cardiology Science and Practice, which is outside. Uh, by Ed Murphy from uh, um, the States from and uh, what he does is he you can do the operation uh, using the Da Vinci uh, robotic machine so you make a series of small incisions and that can be combined with mitral valve surgery obviously and you do exactly what I have shown you before and uh, these are some pictures just showing you uh, the cryo lesions sorry uh, for example here this is the one above the mitral valve and then you can do the superior one up here and then you can go to the, towards the mitral tricuspid valve, so you can so do a right and the left sided maze uh, using robotic, ro robotic surgery and cryoprobes. There are other methods using radio frequency uh, clamps uh, to, uh, to achieve exactly what I have shown you. Uh, so, what are the indications for the maze operation? Uh, that currently, uh, we ha they are, it should be symptomatic, lone paroxysmal established, uh, either paroxysmal or established uh, atrial fibrilli fibrillation, which is resistant to medical treatment, as an alternative to ablation, and that's why I was asking. How often do you do ablation for your patients with uh, symptomatic atrial fibrillation, either paroxysmal or 
uh, established. And uh, the second indication is combined with mitral valve surgery, whether it is degenerative or rheumatic. And that is an important indication. Um, and it could be also combined with other types of operations, obviously, in ischemic patients having CABG or in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And you've heard about this uh, from uh, Dr. Ali Votto yesterday. But just how often, not really often, but it is an indication. Um, what to expect? Um, there is very low added mortality and mor morbidity for the maze operation in experienced hands. You can perform the operation with a more added morbidity of not more than one or two percent if you do not prolong the operation and the cardioplegia, etc., etc. The interesting thing is the success rate is very high, uh, much higher than other invasive like ablation procedures. And you can expect 80 to 95 percent uh, one year uh, success rate, uh, depending obviously on the patients and what we were talking about having uh, a score like uh, what Sabine was suggesting. And uh, there are many factors, obviously. And the interesting thing is that the, re the result is maintained <coughs> and there is very slow recurrence rate with a five-year expected freedom from recurrence of around 70 to 80 percent. Again, that's quite high. So against that background, uh, what do you think the outcome is? I mean, that's uh, what I say. Why bother do all this? Does it improve survival? There are very few studies addressing this question. One of them is from Toronto, where they have looked in a retrospective study uh, at a matched population where patients undergoing mitral valve surgery either had a maze operation or did not have a maze operation for whatever reason. And they were um, closely matched, they were very similar. And behold, the survival, the five-year survival in those who had the maze operation was higher than those who did not have the maze operation, suggesting, strongly suggesting, that this actually improves survival in this group of patients. Similarly, when they looked at, um, importantly, freedom from thromboembolic complications, mainly stroke, uh, again, in the maze, there was 100% freedom from thromboembolic complications against that uh, patients who did not have the maze, again, uh, strongly favoring the maze operation. Obviously, you can criticize this, uh, uh, a retrospective study with all the problems, etc., but at least it is something which shows that uh, the maze operation could improve outcome as defined by both survival and freedom from thromboembolism. So in conclusion, the cut and sew simple maze three operation is a safe and effective procedure in experienced hands. Uh, several refinements, including the use of robotics, have been introduced. 
In my view, the operation is grossly underused, probably due to lack of familiarity, and there is a need for further randomized trial. There is currently a randomized trial uh, called the Prague. Don't ask me what, the, what Prague stands for. It certainly is not the city, but something P. La, la, la. And uh, it is a randomized prospective study, multi-center. And that, I think, we should use this operation, but also make sure that what we're doing is having uh, a favorable effect on our patients. Thank you very much.